Hello YouTube. Today is so special for so many reasons. One, I'm just so excited to be filming again. I don't know why I decided to. I was just on a walk with Zoe, who's gonna be in this video today, and I was like, what if we resurrect the YouTube? What if we just try it out? Because here's the thing, we have such a chill, fun friend group, and I feel like we do fun stuff. Two, I don't know, I just felt like this year I needed a creative switch up. I mean, I will always do the shop. The shop is my number one, my child. I was like, I want to do something new, and then I just decided to bring back the podcast and YouTube. So I've been binging Abigail's cup of tea. I've been binging my old videos. And Abigail's cup of tea is like my, my favorite YouTuber. I think today's video is going to be really special because it's about friendship in your 20s, which I think is like one of the most intriguing and personal and hard and beautiful subjects you could talk about. So Zoe's gonna come over, we're gonna hit up the grocery store, get some snacks, and then we're going to answer some Q and A's, some questions from you guys. Along the way, we'll probably spill a little bit of tea about our friend lore, which is vast. It's so rich. Before she gets here, I am going to take my dogs to the park by my house because they will be feral little beasts during the video. I need them to like get it all out. You want to go to the park? Should we go to the park, Atlas. Should we go to the park, August? <laughs> Woo! One, two. Three, let's go! <laughs> Look who I found! Hello! Hot and candy vibes. Oh, cute! <laughs> How are you feeling? About the vlog? Yeah, and everything. I mean, I was just telling Holly that I took my camera out of the bag and it had like dust all <laughs> over it. I'm like, oh. <sighs> She's back. <laughs> Wait, it's so fun though. I'm already having so much fun. We're getting snacks before our Q&A. I have to make sure I don't look at the top screen. I know. It's I'm so hard. I'm so obsessed with staring at myself. I gotta no, put the thing down. No, but then you don't see the shot, you know? Um, okay. Let's I saw this thing where you can add like lime and coconut to, to yeah, to poppy or to Olipop. So I think we should, that's what I'm gonna try. Okay. Wait, I'm not even sure. <laughs> you be the hand model. <laughs> How is it's that a mermaid? Harry Potter mermaid. So. Is it yeah. not a mermaid? No, wait, I think it is. She's a little lumpy. <laughs> like, I'm that one. <laughs> you can be that. <laughs> oh, cute. Oh, and, which one do you want to be for real? I want to be the dragon. <laughs> Why was I doing that so aggressively? I was like, Welcome to Hallie and Zoe's drink lab. Dun dun dun! All right. <laughs> I was thinking to put some like crushed, and we have some mint leaves and some creamer. ASMR. Like a myth. I know. Juicy berry. Voila! That noise. Oh, that's cute. So crispy. So crisp. Oh no, it is brown. Oh. It's gonna kill the acid. Oh. 
the weirdest song stuck in my head. <laughs> the graduation song. <laughs> we really are in questions class. You want wine? Yes, please. What happened to the oh, part of <laughs> Girl dinner. <laughs> Spilling our guts. I'm so nervous. You know what will help me right now? It's the freaking graduation music. Never <laughs> mind. Play it. I am playing. You got it stuck in my head. <laughs> it's always something like what they play like in the Hunger Games. It's helping, right? <laughs> it is distracting. Now we've got our drinks. We're gonna get to the bulk of the video, the friendship Q&A. Tea. <laughs> we obviously have like our life experience. A little scary giving advice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can try, but I don't know anything. <laughs> A humble attitude. <laughs> Questions are so good. I'm really excited to talk about this. Okay. <laughs> Let's just start. Okay. How did you know that making up was worth it? Because, yes, for those of you who don't know, we were once not friends. <laughs> We were once friends and then not friends. That was so now silly of us. Here's how I knew I wanted to make up a Yeah, I was gonna say, you were the one who reached out, so you... Okay. Zoe and I were really close for like eight months. That was it? That's like from when we met in person. Yeah. To the yeah. fallout. Basically, it was like a very hard ending to the yeah. friendship. I could not stop stalking her social media. <laughs> I watched all her YouTube videos. I stalked her Instagram. We had mutual friends, so we were always hearing about each other. And it was like a year and a half in, and I just could not get over, like, I just could not let go of Zoe and our friendship in my mind. Like, my therapist was saying, stop stalking her on social media, and I just couldn't. And I realized one day, it's because this is the only way I can still kind of keep her in my life. That was just such a big moment where I was like, what if instead of stalking her stuff, I just became friends with her again? Like, we became close again. That From that moment on, I was like, I miss Zoe so much, that's why I've been stalking her stuff. I feel like even then, with a friend breakup, you might not even know if it's worth it until you see how it feels. Yeah. But I think we were really lucky because we were on the same page, and once we talked, it was like, we were like best friends after 10 yeah. minutes of that phone call. Yeah. What made you feel like making up was worth it? Yeah, I think probably for me, maybe the good was always a lot better than the bad, and mm. I knew it was just kind of like, oh, we're just having a moment, mm -hmm. <laughs> a long moment. I always knew it would be worth it because I'd, I've never met somebody like you, and so I already knew it was worth it. I already told you, like, when we stopped talking, I didn't feel like it was over. Mm -hmm. But I definitely probably needed that time to grow. I mean, yeah. I would have preferred to have you in to my life, together. of course. But, yeah. you know, in hindsight, it's like, oh, like, look what I got from all of that. Yeah. I just felt like I was too scared to reach out mm -hmm. to try and make up, you know, fear of rejection or I wasn't sure how you were feeling. Yeah. You no, know, there was just a feeling that, like, it wasn't over to me mm -hmm. so maybe it was more of like an intuitive thing for me let's just talk about what happened <laughs> okay. it's so cryptic yeah 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 in the nutshell it's so hard i don't want to be like airing everything but i feel but like just to be say. relatable should i say go for it here's what i feel like happened in our big friend fallout and the reason we're talking about this is because i think most girls I know have had a friend breakup and it's a very taboo topic because there's two people involved so you don't yeah. always want to share it. But now that we're friends again, I feel like it's kind of a special outlook to have because we're both comfortable enough to say what happened and like we can joke yeah. about it and we're best yeah. friends again. What happened is we met during COVID on Instagram and we were both, not to speak for you, but I was at least very lonely during that time. I felt like I had fallen out with my high school mm -hmm. friends. Here was this community bookstagram and we became friends. We met in person and it was amazing like immediate besties mm -hmm. what i felt like went wrong a little bit was like we were posting our friendship so much online which i think put a lot of pressure on us when we were hanging out together it was like we got to get content which started out so fun i think like a lot of friendship stuff starts out so fun but then can yeah. turn into pressure when you like start like getting people's like 
<clears throat> feedback or like yes. approval or you're like oh it's like okay they love seeing the friendship content so i'm gonna post more i'm gonna post yeah. more but i think that took away a little bit well it kind of like expedited our friendship without us yeah. growing in like yeah. an authentic way. i agree yeah i also felt like there was just like a lot of expectations we had on each other because we were like hey we are best friends it's just like so fast and so like intense Mm -hmm. and so fun like there was so mm -hmm. much good and stuff but then like when it stopped being like that it was like whoa what's happening the like, equilibrium was not balanced yeah i feel like we would disagree over stupid stuff there's just like so much intense energy and it all just came to a standstill because we were doing like two trips a month so i think for me it just like caught up to me where i was feeling so much pressure from instagram yeah. so much pressure to be like this happy perfect person it almost kind of like seems like a type of burnout oh that's it's like you're just like so intense and so involved and everyone's like you know all over social media yeah it almost kind of feels like okay like, yeah i can't do it anymore or whatever i think i thought i couldn't keep being friends with you if i wasn't perfect Mm. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't keep being the person that my friends thought I was. Yeah. And then instead of thinking like, my friends are great people who love me, let's take the pressure off and like talk yeah. to them and be like, I can't do this many trips, like I, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Instead, I just shut down. I feel like that happens a lot in friendship. Like um, projecting your own insecurities mm -hmm. onto another person or projecting your yeah. own anxiety and then blaming them when in reality i don't want to say it's anyone's fault because life is so hard we're all just humans like growing but it can yeah. be easy to blame i think that's how it was for me like i blamed instagram and the friend group and all of that rather than just like taking a breather <laughs> and yeah. resting yeah i've been talking for forever no, i am i'm agreeing with everything i maybe i feel like we were taking the wrong things too seriously as well mm -hmm. but that probably was Instagram and you're this character. Oh, <laughs> like, I don't want to be. We would seriously like put each other in crazy boxes. <laughs> yeah, we'd be like, because you're an enneagram, this you did this, yeah. or like that was so zodiac sign of you, or that was yeah. so Hubble yeah. of you. Yeah, I was so insecure. I could I not. I think that honestly was a huge factor. Was just the insecurity, maybe. <sighs> yeah, and it was also new, and it's hard to navigate friendships with people who are different than you or you know yeah anyone. for sure honestly so yeah that's honestly what happened it, it just came to a standstill and then we didn't even really have a fight we just mm -mm. I feel like there was just a stop text. talking <laughs> <laughs> that was it <laughs> and then we didn't talk for two years three yeah, years and like years. two months wow that's so wild. I feel like we have been friends longer than we haven't been friends. We have been friends for two years, even have though we, we met four years ago because wow. of the two years yeah. in the middle. Mm. Um, how were you feeling during that time before the fallout? Yeah, it was intense. I feel like that there was a lot of, I don't want to say there wasn't like good because obviously there was so much good enough for me to want it back in my life. Yes. With some new perspective and mm -hmm. <laughs> a healthier mindset. Yeah, but that yeah, was very intense. I feel like Instagram, at least for me, pay, played a huge role in all of that and just like the pressure, the competition, mm -hmm. like unnecessary things. Yeah. And so maybe it was a little bit, not for show, because I don't want to say our friendship wasn't like real or anything because it was, but it was like a lot showier than it is now. And it could be very showy because it's like we still like do those things together, but now it's mm -hmm. more like real and we're doing it to hang out with each other and not just mm -hmm. to share it. Even yeah. though we're sharing it now. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels more like healthy and I think taking the time I've like learned a lot more about myself and like what I want in like friends and like myself and mm -hmm. everyone around me. Yeah. And so it doesn't affect me as much. Some of the stuff that got to me back then Oh, why would was it even never bother why? me? Why? <laughs> And we were just talking about this in the car. You see this all the time, I feel like, on social media. Like, this exact friendship burnout where it's so content-related yeah. and so public. If you have an inevitable argument, as people do in friendships, it's like, it feels a lot heavier than it actually yeah. is. Even just meeting people on social media, it's... It's weird because mm. I feel like on the surface you you all ha you have the same hobbies and you love the same books or like whatever in our case mm -hmm. and bookstagram oh like this person is just like me and then yeah. you you know social media is fake you get to know the person and you're like oh it's sometimes actually it can be different yeah there's actually differences and sometimes mm -hmm. there's not it's great 
but yeah this is all messy can be messy it's normalize good. it yeah good yeah. and messy they can go hand in hand i think in our case like how cool it is we went through this and are now friends again mm -hmm. I feel like that's rare i think that's cool you know what's interesting though <laughs> i don't know that i would change i mean i would definitely want to change how it went down or like have communicated more yeah. but i feel like so much more stable of a person after all these life lessons but i don't know if i could like yeah undo it no it had to happen this one says what are your thoughts on being friendly to many but only a few one to three close friends i'm an introvert and don't have a lot of friends i get peopled out very quickly i feel like that is prime yeah <laughs> you're in a good spot i love that like one to three close friends and then you have like did she say you have like a group you're just like friendly to a lot of people but you have yeah. you have actually i actually love that i kind of feel like that place to be because then you yeah. have your gang you can come to too many then... friends is not good which is another thing i have learned same like i got to the point where i'm like no new friends same. like i can't do it anymore solely because i felt stretched so thin that i i wasn't being good friend to all my friends yeah exactly like too many texts I was always feeling overstimulated. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a good a good spot to be in, especially if you're an introvert. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a small social battery. You know, obviously keep an open mind if you yeah. want to make more friends and you're friendly with people. Keep in mind that the people you come in contact with could become a deeper friendship. So like it's good to be open minded, but I honestly feel like that's so valid. Yeah, I think it's better to have a few closer friends yeah you can really like nourish those friendships and if you feel like you need more friends then you can make new friends yeah. if you, or more friends if you need this question is how to make new friends after having trauma from ex-friends so true <laughs> and that's what i've been saying <laughs> it's really hard i validate that yeah. i think for me it was mostly just situational and i just needed friends that weren't a part of instagram and bookstagram yeah and all of that that nobody knew it was really like it was hard for me to have mutual friends with you at that's time. really hard when you have an, a friendship breakup yeah it's messy because it's like you were always in my life mm -hmm. even though you weren't in my life so I was like, I need to go make some friends that nobody knows, and they're just for me, at least while I heal, because now I feel like- Now it's the best. Yeah, now I'm like, these are my friends. <laughs> now we just have a big friend group that's like so close, yeah. I feel like. I mean, making friends is hard, especially the older you get. I think that is probably what healed me a lot but i'm like mature enough and 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 secure enough mm -hmm. in like my relationships to be like these are my friends these are my friends like, yeah there's no know, competition there's no competition and it just has to be that way i think that's just the hardest thing ever when you're like how do i meet new people when this beautiful friendship i had just fell apart how do i learn to love again <laughs> Yeah, it's the same like with the breakup. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It was healing for me too as I made friends. Mm -hmm. And I kind of was lucky to come into like an established friend group So I got to sit back and watch how they interacted with each other But my walls were definitely up for sure And I just don't I don't really think there's anything wrong with that if you've just gone through a friend breakup You're not gonna be the most open with the new people that you're meeting. I think that's totally okay yeah. Like being aware of it as you're meeting people. It, it's it's a big learning experience like when you've gone through a friend breakup like it causes a lot of self-reflection in what you want to work on in yourself and then what you value in other people. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of that and then trying to be open to the fact that you could be closer with people but protecting yourself and having your own yeah. boundaries as well. I feel like it's really healing to put yourself out there but I think it's the first few steps that can be really hard. Keep yourself safe because life is hard. <laughs> They're not serving you. Life is too short. Too short. What fun plans do you guys have this summer? And I think we can include fun activities to do with friends. Okay, love. We are going to have camping summer. Yeah. We're so excited. I don't really want to even travel. I was going to say, like, you just moved back to Utah and you said, like, a very Utah summer. Bonfires, board games, camping, pickleball. Oh pickleball. Well, we've been having, like, Disney nights with our other friends. Mm -hmm. We just, like, get together. Mostly just talk about going to Disneyland. Yeah, and our outfits. outfits. <laughs> we watch ride videos. We watch the fireworks shows on YouTube. Yeah. We watch every single high school musical. <laughs> Troy and Gabriella song. Yeah. I think, like, hanging out and talking is so fun. But one thing we've been trying to do in our friend group is monthly, like, organ. 
organized night. Yeah. So we did January vision boards and talked about our goals for the year. And then we did Galentine's. We didn't do March. We were going to. March has been busy. Yeah. For April, maybe I was thinking we could like have a Emily Henry picnic. Oh, that'd be fun. I was going to say, it's been very cold. Yeah. But once the weather starts warming, I feel like, you know, going to the mountains, having picnics. Yeah. We love to get pizza and have picnics. <laughs> pizza and picnics, baby. <laughs> I feel like we just like to talk is kind of the thing. Yeah. We're not like a do stuff friend group. We're a talk and giggle. Even if we try to do stuff, like it, it always turns into just like chatting. I love it. Yeah. But I do feel like there's something to be said about planning like a special cute yeah. evening. Crafts and board games. Do you yeah. like board games? I love board games. We need to play we board need to games. Do that. Yeah. Watching shows. Going to get boba. Anything with sunsets in the summer. Going to Barnes and Noble. We ate. A lot of these are how to make friends. I don't know that I'm like the most qualified, but I will share how I have made my close friends <laughs> yeah. and you can do your friend group. Hard. It's so hard it's as an adult. Scary. I think you just have to be uncomfortable, but a fun way that is like good for easing into it is how we met like yeah bookstagram is huge it's where i've met most of my best friends and i think that's like a really good progression because you can start like in the dms and then get each other's phone numbers and then facetime yeah. by then if you're facetiming you can know you're pretty compatible i think what about you yeah i think i mean three of my best friends have come from that we don't have high expectations sometimes because mm -hmm. Like I said, it can be deceiving and hard sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I Why are you saying that? <laughs> um, like based off what? Yeah. No, because I honestly, you can meet people no, who it's so true. you think you're best friends because you like the same books, but then you might not always. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I got you. So just like, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket or in one person, I should say. Yeah, and don't let it progress. I feel like this is just something big that I've learned is never let a friendship progress too fast. It's gonna, you're gonna get closer over time and I think it's better to get closer over time than like super intense. For me, it was just going where the people were, trying to be a little bit more like friendly or more open than I am naturally like trying to reach out to people a little bit more, like you said, kind of more open-minded. And also, I just feel like people are gonna be put into your life that are meant to be in your life, so there's a big aspect of it. I went, I just went to church, started going to a new church, and like mm -hmm. there was already just like people there, and it was like, okay, like there's yeah. at least people I can work with and, you know, reach out to. I tried to reach out to them a little bit more than I usually would. Mm -hmm. You know, just kind of getting, I don't know. Yeah. Just go where the people are. <laughs> go where the people are, it, which is so hard it's to do. It's so hard and so scary, but the ones that are supposed to be there will, will come, mm -hmm. I think. And you really just have to meet like one or two people you get along with and they'll yeah. introduce you to your to their friends. Yeah. That's how I've met most of my close friends, yeah. is yeah. through our friend Kelsey. How to verbalize your needs to your friends without seating, seeming needy. Your friends want to know, and I think this is such a good first step of like, you're wanting to verbalize. Mm -hmm. That is so hard when you don't verbalize. I think that can like really affect a lot of friendships. Just thinking about it like everyone's needy and everyone has needs. Think about your friend and like try to see the best in them because if they're not hanging out a lot or not texting you back a lot, I think like give them benefit of the doubt. But I feel like there's a good way to go about it that's very open and loving. Say that was the case. You could be like, hey, want to hang out? Want to do this plan? If they say yes, then when you're hanging out, you can be like, I'm so glad we're doing this. Yeah. Kind of like a compliment sandwich. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is the best. I love spending time with you. And then say, just be honest. Like, I've actually been struggling because I've been lonely. I've been missing out on our time together. So can we do this more? But if, and then if they say no multiple times, you feel like you're getting ghosted, then you could tell them at that point. The, the key is just to verbalize it. Just don't, communication. don't hold it in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's okay to be needy. Yeah, everybody is. Yeah, everybody's jealous. Everybody's insecure. Everybody's needy. Competitive. Lazy. <laughs> Lazy. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Everyone's ugly. <laughs> How to heal after a friendship breakup. We're so qualified. Oh. <laughs> I think time, time heals all wounds. I think that's a big one. Therapy for me. Yeah. Helped a lot. Because sometimes a friend breakup's almost like hurt more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like worse than actual breakups. Wait, I had something so good. Sorry. No, no. Please. 
it left me though. In my experience, people in my life were so supportive and they didn't say this, but I just feel like everyone moves on from it quicker than you do. That is so valid because it's not their trauma. Once again, yeah. loved therapy for that. I could not get over this friend breakup. I think giving yourself a lot of grace, like if you are still struggling so long after, like a friend breakup is gonna affect every friendship you make, your ability to trust. So just giving yourself a lot of grace, like that's, makes total sense mm -hmm. sometimes i've never told you this i would just open my voice notes on my phone and like record and talk oh. to myself and then i would just finish and delete it and be like therapy it's so, like validate yourself because no one knows what you're feeling as much as you know yeah what talk it out in some cases in our case maybe it wasn't meant to be forever Mm -hmm. You know, so maybe keep that in mind. True. Or... For some people, they're not meant to be in your life. That's okay. Yeah. For others, maybe you could let them back in. But what would you say to someone if they tried to rekindle and the person didn't want to? That's hard. Because that's what I was afraid of, definitely. I just think give it time. And if they really don't want to be in your life, then, you know, that's their choice. And I don't feel like you can force them to. It yeah. could have happened. Yeah. I, I feel like I did need some time. Yeah. So... Time. It's tricky. Did we talk about how we rekindled? You should load the text. Do you still have it? I do. That's so funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it here. <laughs> you were so brave for having the phone call. Were you scared of the phone call? Yeah, I was really scared. I was freaking call. out. I feel like when you reached out, I had been going through some really hard stuff. And so when I saw the message on my phone, I was just like, of course. Yeah, of, of course, course it was happen. happening right now. I asked her if she wanted to have a phone call. We ended up talking yeah. the next day. I walked 18 <laughs> miles in the two day, those two days because I walk when I'm stressed. Yeah. And I was so stressed. So I called Zoe mm -hmm. and I, it was like, I don't even feel like it was that awkward. It was like pretty comfortable. One thing you did say when you called me, because you asked me to, to if I'd be open for a call. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> then I answered the phone. <laughs> You're like, I was thinking we could like talk about, I can't remember exactly what you said, but like I was thinking we could talk about that, the whole situation, or maybe like what hurt us. Okay, so do you want to start? <laughs> I was like, oh, why don't you start? I really put you on the spot. Well, no, it was so I funny, did not though. on purpose. It was all on my turn. I see. <laughs> then to be like, I'll go first and then just blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. would be uh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. We talked for like an hour yeah we talked a long time and it was so cute we talked and then like a couple hours later <laughs> you called me again i was like okay so <laughs> now fangirl? what's your thoughts on throne of glass so what did lorkin do <laughs> do you think <laughs> that was so fun yeah that was such a fun phone yeah. call and then we had like two years to catch up on yeah oh that was so fun was like, <laughs> this is crazy we hope we helped you in any way <laughs> maybe it's more helped us yeah <laughs> healing know. I yes, love friendship. Yeah. Go follow Zoe's YouTube oh, or subscribe to Zoe's YouTube. <sighs> well, if you take our advice and it doesn't work for you, we were kidding. That was all a joke. We were joking. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> the jokes we have. The laughs. Me and him. Jokes. Pranks, laughs. laughs. We have some laughs. Pranks. Laughs. Yeah. Pranks. Laughs. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I just keep going. <laughs> Bye. This concludes my first YouTube video back. I'm already excited to edit it. Edit it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I had the best time filming it. I hope that it was a good watch, and I will be vlogging my Disneyland trip this week, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Really Goodbye. Till next time. I